Hey kids, today's episode is brought to you by Oversized Titties. I fucking hate how large my chest is. I want to fucking scream. As a non-binary person who doesn't want to look particularly feminine, I want to be like in the middle. Not masculine, not feminine. Somewhere in the middle. Uh, Having a body that is so big and so curvy is a major fucking problem. I'm actually actually losing my goddamn mind right now. I'm putting on a really, you know, brave face, but uh, I'm devastated. So yeah, weight loss has been difficult. I have not been doing a, a fantastic job at it and I don't know. I mean, I feel like this is how it started before, but getting over that initial, you know, having to build up your metabolism and all that shit, I just, (laughs) just did not anticipate having to do it ever again. But here we are at 225. And I honestly feel like anything above 180, I have to, to just look feminine because I'm a fucking chunk, (laughs) y'all. I'm so fucking chock full of curves. Like, it's it's impossible, I, I feel, for me to look good uh, trying to go andro um, with the body that I have. And I know that is problematic. I know that there are plenty of people who are androgynous, who are overweight and obese. And, like, just for me, I, I lose my goddamn mind just looking at my body. Not to mention, none of my clothes fit. None of my fucking clothes fit. Losing weight has been difficult. And it's caused me to, you know, spiral, as I often do. I'm I'm constantly spiraling, especially with weight. That is a major problem for me. And so, while I am depressed out of my mind, it's, it's weird. It's weird um, that... At the moment, I, I don't know, there's this, this new phenomenon. Yeah, it's a, it's a new development in my experience with depression. Well, let me, let me explain, like, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, because I think that'll help you to understand a little bit where I'm coming from as far as um, self-care versus self-hate and how that kind of affects the way that I treat myself and how... That affects my um, disposition. Maslow's hierarchy of needs starts off with physiological needs. That is water, air, food. Uh, And then you go to safety, which includes, you know, shelter, um, money, uh, employment, things that you need in order to feel secure. Um, The next one is uh, love and belonging, friendship, intimacy. Um... Just feeling like you belong somewhere. Uh, then it's self-esteem, self-explanatory, and then at the very top is self-actualization. That is the fucking goal. That is the peace day resistance. That is what you're trying to get in life, and a lot of people don't. Sad story. Obviously, I am missing quite a few um, components of every category, honestly. But as you get closer to the top, I'm, you know more and more, what what is the word, uh, lacking, uh, as far as, you know, self-actualization, that's, no, uh, self-esteem, mm-mm, uh, love and belonging, not so much, uh, security, safety, eh, uh, and physical, physiology is mostly, um, mostly good, I, I, I think, so, Yeah, there's a lot of needs that I have that aren't being met. And when I am depressed, that becomes worse. Because I feel that I do not deserve to feel comfortable. Um, Mentally, emotionally, physically, I feel like I cannot feel comfortable. And so I I self-harm. And it's not just, you know, you know, run of the mill the, the obvious, the, the usual suspects, um, you know, cutting, um, even restricting is, you know, 
pretty obvious it's self-harm. Um, other things that I do are like not going to the doctor when I know I need to go to the doctor, not getting new glasses when I need new glasses. It, they're subtle things that really affect your well-being and quality of life. Um, and I do it to myself. I just feel that I don't deserve to feel comfortable. And so I do these things to myself in order to make life unbearable. Love and belonging are things... That whole category is just... You just slide that shit out of the fucking pyramid. Like, that's gone when I'm depressed. Um, intimacy, sex, love, friendship. Those things mean nothing to me. Recently, it's it's been an interesting experience because I'm an asexual person. I, I've talked about it on this channel. Um, and... I'm not purely asexual. I'm not like a person that is entirely like celibate, um, entirely uh, not attracted to people, entirely repulsed uh, by sexual um, activities. Um, I, I kind of it's kind of muddy for me, a little muddy. I'll I'll explain why, because I do find people attractive, and those people that I find attractive like they're particular people, I do say some nasty fucking shit about them. <laughs> like this one right here. I wouldn't mind if you sat on my fucking face for two hours. There is this nebulous experience of sexual attraction that kind of culminates in me, um, I don't know, using erotica and smut as an outlet. I've been writing so much fucking smut, y'all. Whoo! So much goddamn smut. It has been... Well, it's been gross, mostly. But I've been writing smut. Um, and that is a huge outlet for me. So... I, I do have an interest in sex. I would like to like sex. I would like to have sex and enjoy it. And the disconnect for me is in having sex and becoming part of the experience myself. Um, it's just never been enjoyable for me. And so if I had one of my faves, like if Honey or, or Hosek over there came up to me and was like fucking ready to go, you know, I would, I would definitely be really excited about it because that's just the way that people, you know, show their affection for each other. Um, I would be interested, definitely interested, because why the fuck not? Um, but would I enjoy it? I don't know. Like, because in past experiences, I've never enjoyed it. It's, it's always this, this feeling like I'm just laying here, like, you know, thinking about whatever, hoping the shit is over eventually literally this is what I look like when I have sex I'm not sure if someone that I just found incredibly beautiful incredibly appealing um, if they came up to me and were like were interested in having sex with me if I wouldn't well I would definitely jump at the opportunity because it's it's not so much wanting to have sex as it is wanting to share with this person uh, something that is seemingly important to them. And so I, I would, uh, you know, give it the old college try, but I don't foresee it being an enjoyable experience. And that fucking sucks. That fucking sucks. But recently I have been using my connection to sex um, as an outlet um, which is interesting because that's a thing that is on the hierarchy of needs that would totally just fall by the wayside um, along with you know friendship family all that shit but sexuality hasn't for whatever reason I have allowed myself to have this single morsel <laughs> of well-being in my life um 
in sexual outlet and um, it's been interesting because I still do all the same bullshit I do to myself. I still self-harm egregiously. Um, I keep things to myself. I will, you know, keep myself uncomfortable. I'll put myself into uncomfortable situations and not say anything and just allow them to go on. Um, that is definitely a form of self-harm, um, especially over time. Uh, you begin to feel like you don't matter. You're not worth anything. I've done it and it definitely has affected me um, to the point that I do it to myself because it's familiar. <laughs> yeah, we, we do the things that are familiar, not necessarily the things that make us happy, but the things that make us comfortable. And there's a lot of comfort and discomfort for me it's very familiar but yeah I have been riding the wave as it were we'll see how how this goes as far as um my weight loss goes will it will help to have an outlet for my frustrations yeah stay tuned we'll, we'll see how um Finn's fantastic adventure goes I'll talk to y'all later